Well, 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 we made it through 11 Resident Evil games so far, but I do think just taking 5 minutes per video to talk about them just isn't going to cut it. What I want to say is, there will be longer reviews now too. We start this new series with the next entry in the Resident Evil franchise, Resident Evil 5. Let's do this! Resident Evil 5 It's the year 2005, YouTube just launched its website, Jamie Foxx won the Oscar for Best Actor and Batman began Batmaning in Batman Begins. Among those historic significant events, Resident Evil 4 swooned gamers all around the world. People were ecstatic about Capcom's newest entry to the franchise and demanded more. And they should get more. In the same year, Capcom announced that they were already working on the next entry in the franchise, Resident Evil 5. The E3 2007 rolls around and the world holds its breath as the first trailer for Resident Evil 5 makes its debut. The trailer looked more than promising. Chris Redfield should make his return and fight his way through a desert-like African landscape. There was only one problem. Capcom somehow didn't see the problem with a white guy shooting up groups of Africans. Yikes. Safe to say that several groups didn't take too kindly to that. Let's leave it with that. That's a topic I'm definitely not going to touch. Capcom apologized and introduced the African main character, Sheva Aloma, to make it less racist. That's why I'm your partner. Help put them at ease. These changes led to the game being delayed and finally see a release in 2009. The game mostly got favorable reviews by fans and critics, but got a lot of criticism for straying away from the typical atmospheric survival horror gameplay to a more action game base. The game's premise sees the introduction of the International Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, or BSAA for short. Our old friend Chris Redfield is now working for the BSAA and is sent to the African country of Kijuju. And just look at him! Chris is a beast! What are they feeding that guy? Together with his new partner Sheva Alomar, he is tasked with apprehending the bioweapons dealer Ricardo Irving. Chris and Sheva learn that the people of Kijuju are saviors of the fine arts. They enjoy beating up people in sacks, publicly executing people and shoving nasty parasites into each other's throats. Nice. With the mood set now, let's take a look at the game itself. At first glance, Resident Evil 5 doesn't seem too different from its predecessor. The camera is again fixed behind the main character's shoulder and the familiar laser side aiming is making a return too. And look at that, the AI companion mechanic is making a comeback too. As I mentioned before, the character of Sheva Alomar makes her debut in this game. She decided to join the BSAA because her parents died in an accident caused by the evil Umbrella Corporation. Sheva permanently follows the player around to help him out. But unlike most of the NPCs in the previous games, Sheva is able to take care of herself. And I have to admit, she is quite a badass. Burn in hell, you son of a bitch! Sheva can also be equipped with her own weapons and helps the player further by supplying ammunition and heals. I do appreciate Sheva's help, but sometimes her help is a little bit overbearing. This one time, for example. See how I'm trying to make room to pick up that awesome AK? Sheva keeps sabotaging me by throwing ammo at me. And yet again, if Sheva dies, it's game over for you too. So make sure to return her kindness and help her out too. If you don't want to be followed around by an NPC, you can also let a friend join in to take part in some co-op fun. Sadly, I couldn't do that because you actually need friends for that. I do see why people say that this entry takes more of an action game route. Whereas the previous games were set in dark and gloomy laboratories, or back alleys overrun by zombies, Resident Evil 5 mostly takes place during the day and in a wide and open desert area. That's not a good setting for claustrophobic and scary gameplay. And Resident Evil 5 may start the trend in horror games I personally dislike. Instead of using music and visuals to build up an atmosphere, or using fewer hard to defeat enemies to make you dread every new area, these games rely on panic. You know what I mean. You are confronted by hordes of enemies, your ammunition is running out, your health is going down and those goddamn enemies just won't stop coming. That doesn't make me scared, it makes me panic. Yeah, sure, my heart rate goes up, 
but that's also the case if someone suddenly bursts into my room and I panic while trying to pull up my pants in time. Speaking of enemies, they stayed mostly the same from the previous games. Besides your main cannon fodder, the so-called Magini, we also got evil doggies and flying buggers. But wait, there's more. Our old friends the Lickers are back. And I have to give credit to the game, the part where they show up for the first time is actually kinda scary. And don't worry, the game isn't just mindless shooting. Capcom spiced things up by putting your miracles, throwing QTEs at you and even including some puzzles. But yet again, regarding the puzzles, it follows a straight formula. Get a specific item, be attacked by a horde of enemies, use said item and carry on. The previous games did that too, so I'm not going to dwell on that now. The game itself looks really good and here is a fun fact. Resident Evil 5 was the very first game to use a virtual camera system. The voice acting is good too, with Roger Craig Smith and Eva Ladere lending their voices to the main characters. But I have to be honest, I kinda miss the cheesy line delivery from the first games. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Jill sandwich. But wait, is that? I have your weapons for you here. Jack them. I know that voice. That's Illidan Stormrage. I mean, Liam O'Brien. The review's over, guys. This is an instant 10 out of 10. Jokes aside, I do think I've been talking enough about the gameplay. So why don't we drop in with our friend Shava and Chris and find out what's happening to them in this game. As I already said, the game opens with Chris's arrival in Kijuju and his initial meeting with Shava. After some chit chat, they move out to the place Irving is supposed to be, but run into some difficulties. Witnessing a public execution, they first have to fight their way through hostile locals before they try to save a damsel in distress, who turns out to be an ugly parasite. Oh my god, what the fuck is that, bro? These so called Uruboros are an upgraded version of the Las Plagas parasite from the previous game and most certainly got an up in the ugliness department. Holy shit, look at this fucking thing! I know it's not important for the story, but that's not the only thing that's referenced from the previous games. Here we even get a nice name drop. The people here, they're acting like those Ganado detailed in the Kennedy report. Our heroes push forward through a village where they are attacked by a gang of motorcycling Magini. Thankfully, they are saved by the BSAA's Delta team and Shavos mentor, Josh Stone. Right now you may be saying to yourself, wait, we got Chris returning, but where is Jill? Weren't they partners? We learn that Jill died on a mission as her and Chris tried to apprehend our old friend, Albert Wesker. Look, he's a Dragon Ball Z character now. But why do I bring this up now? Just wait. Chris and Trevor carry on through a spooky mine before they finally confront Irving, who is saved by a mysterious cloaked figure in a past doctor mask. Now that's spooky. Our heroes duke it out with the first boss, Popo Karimo, and make haste to meet up with the Delta team, just to find them killed and the checkpoint ruined by an uninvited guest, El Gigante. I mean, Endesu. Pursuing Irving further, the duo makes its way through the marshes of Kijuju and Chris spills the beans that Chill may actually still be alive. What a twist! Chris and Sheva shortly reunite with Josh before they give chase after an escaping Irving. They eventually manage to confront the fucker, but he decides to shoot himself up with some mystery juice to turn into a fish monster. Remember what I told you? Don't fuck with the fish monster. Chris and Sheva fry the calamari and Irving name drops Excella Gion. She is the regional director of Tricell's Africa division, with Tricell being one of the pharmaceutical companies responsible for the creation of the BSAA. You may already guessed where this is going. It of course turns out that Tricell is evil and responsible for the creation of the Magini. Excella is also in cahoots with our old friend Albert Wesker. What a twist! Thank you. Our friends travel to an old system of ruins where they are warmly welcomed by the tribes people there who show them their great balls of fire. We also stumble upon some mysterious flowers, the so called stairway to the sun, the origin of the progenitor virus. Wow, it all comes full circle. Chris and Sheva make their way to a tri cell facility where they hope to finally find Jill. But first, they have to get past the facility's guard dog. Eat this.
With this nuisance gone, they can finally free Jill. Just to find her stasis pod empty. What a twist! Now it's finally time to reveal Excella's evil plan. She and Wesker want to use the Ouroboros to take over the world, and we even get to see what happens if you're not fit for the Ouroboros. Yikes. Chris and Shava confront Wesker and his cloaked bodyguard, who turns out to be a brainwashed chill. What a twist! Yeah, yeah, we get it. She's also a real badass now. Chris manages to get rid of Jill's brainwashing device, and the partners rejoice. They don't have much time to get all touchy-feely though, since Wesker is going to launch his Ouroboros attack soon. Our dynamic duo confronts Excella, who turns into a hentai monster. This thing is easily defeated with the help of a satellite laser. No, seriously, a freaking laser shot by a satellite. How boss is that? After getting his ass handed to him in Resident Evil Code Veronica, it's finally time for Chris to get his revenge on Wesker. They throw down on a bomber Wesker wants to use to spread the Ouroboros, which results in the bomber crashing into a volcano. Yep, that's right, the final showdown between Wesker and Chris goes down in a freaking volcano. Wesker uses the Ouroboros to hulk up, and Chris prepares himself by punching a boulder. That's not really important, I just wanted to mention it somehow. Our heroes manage to give Wesker a calming lava bath and escape via helicopter, just for Wesker to make one last attempt to kill Chris. In true Resident Evil fashion, the big bad guy is taken out via rocket launcher. The game ends with Chris, Sheva, Chill and Josh escaping, and the world being saved once again. Phew, that was quite a ride. But we aren't done yet. Finishing the game allows you to play as Sheva. There are more unlockables, like little figurines you can check out to get a real good look at your favorite characters. Nice. I played the Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition for this review, which also includes two story DLCs, Lost in Nightmares and Desperate Escape. Desperate Escape tells you the story of Jill after she parted ways with Chris. We see how she was found by Josh and how the two made their way to the chopper they later used to aid Chris and Sheva. It's actually really nice to play as Jill this time around, and it doesn't hurt that she has some killer moves. Besides that, it doesn't really differ from the core game. Lost in Nightmares, on the other hand, is set three years prior to the events of the main game and sees Chris and Jill investigating a tip they received regarding the whereabouts of Osmond Spencer, one of the founders of Umbrella. They travel to a mansion in Europe just to find it abandoned and all of Spencer's bodyguards killed. Now this DLC is great. It has some callbacks to the first game, and at first, it does feel a lot like a remake of it. The atmosphere is great and actually scary. You will only run into a handful of enemies, which aren't only scary looking, but are also hard to defeat. This is a prime example for what I think a survival horror game should be like. I wonder why they didn't use this premise for the core game, but using yet another mansion setting maybe wouldn't sit right with the fans. The DLC ends with the fight against Wesker we already saw in the main game. Let's finish this. The Gold Edition also contains the Mercenary Reunion DLC, an upgraded version of the already existing Mercenary mode. It introduces new characters like Excella, Rebecca Chambers, and Mr. Chill Sandwich himself, Barry Burton. Chill Sandwich. Well, that was Resident Evil 5. I did enjoy playing it. I didn't mind too much that the game strayed away from its survival horror roots and took a more action-y path since I really enjoyed the story and the game's characters. Wouldn't Chris, Sheva, Jill and Wesker be in this game, I am sure I wouldn't have enjoyed it half as much. There are some issues I had though, the inventory for example. It's live action again, but that's just something I personally don't like. Long story short, it's still a fun game. But what are we taking a look at in the next review? Resident Evil, The Dark Side Chronicles. Hmm, that looks nice. Until then, Thank you so much for watching, this is Ru signing off, bye bye